we aim to examine the impact of virtual human animation on the emotional response of users. A medical virtual reality system, known as the Rapid Response Training System, or RRTS, was used to conduct this experiment. The RRTS was developed to train student nurses and current nurse practitioners in the detection of signs and symptoms of rapid deterioration. For this experiment, participants were informed of the purpose of the simulation and any potential hazards. Then, an electrodermal activity, or EDA, Q sensor was applied to his or her left wrist. This sensor records all electrical activity and the temperature of the participant throughout the experiment. The participant then filled out a series of questionnaires. The first was a basic demographic survey. This was followed by the Octet Interpersonal Complex Item Pool, or the 8 IPIP IPC. This was followed by the Profile of Mood States, or the Palm Survey. The personality and mood surveys were used for cofactor analysis. The final survey before training was the baseline positive and negative affect questionnaire, or PANS. After the surveys were complete, the participant was led by the experimenter through the training protocol. This is a hands-on walkthrough of the various system capabilities and interactions. After the participant was well acquainted with the environment, they could begin the simulation in the first time step. There are four distinct phases in the RRTS. These are referred to as time stamps. As the time stamps progress, the condition of the virtual patient declines. This is reflected in both the vital signs and the appearance and behaviors of the patient. All representations were based off of real patient data. In order to isolate the effects of the character animation, each participant was randomly assigned to one of two simulation conditions. The first condition was the dynamic animation condition. In this condition, the virtual agent is fully animated. This means he exhibits facial morphs, texture changes, and movement of the upper torso, appendages, and head. The second condition, or static animation condition, contains the same virtual agent, but with no animation. This means while he maintains the interactions, speech capabilities, and vital signs, he does not animate in the face or body. During each timestamp, the participant must interact with the patient in a number of ways. First, the participant may apply instruments to the patient to gather medical information. Next, the participant may ask the patient any number of questions from a predetermined list. My son will come sometime today. The final aspect of the surveillance is observing the passive behaviors that the patient exhibits based off of medically determined time intervals. At the end of each time stamp, the participant fills out the PANES and the Differential Emotion Scale, or DES. Finally, they answer a short quiz on the condition of the patient. Together, the participants' data reflect a clear portrait of their emotional journey through the simulation. By comparing the two conditions, we can determine the impact of just the virtual human's animation. The difference in these two conditions is clear. The question of how these differences affect the emotional state of the users just might surprise you.